Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the UE2 R1 SBC, a general purpose single ball computer that can be used as a server, a personal computer, and even XAI. The UE2 R1 is powered by the Rockshift RK35 AA SOC, an octa core processor with four high performance Cortex A76 cores and 4 power efficient Cortex A55 cores. It is paired with the Mali G610 MP4 GPU, making it a robust choice for everything from edge computing to multimedia playback. Now, let's check out what is in the box. UE2 sent me the acrylic shell kit. Inside, there is the R1 SBC, heatsink and mounting stand, it also comes with a 12.3M power supply and acrylic casings. The USB to TTL debug tones is also given as a gift. Now, let's take a closer look at the device specification and I.O. The heart of the board is a Rockdrift RK35AA LOC. Next to it is a 64GB NAND flash chip from Sandis and the two 4GB flagship from Micron. It is 8GB of RAM. If 8GB of RAM is too much, you can go with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of EMMC. Not forget to mention that you can also opt for 60GB of RAM with 128GB of EMMC or even 256GB of EMMC storage. From this side, we can see most of the I.O such as the M.2 E key for wireless module, the 3.5mm audio checks, DC power checks, LED indicator, HDMI port, USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 ports. We also have Gigabit Ethernet, USB 2.0 extended connector, microSD card connector and even the 30-pin GPIO where you can access to GPIO UART ISWC, SBI, ADC, and PWM. On this side, we have four buttons, Reset, Power, Recovery, and Boot. We also have one CDI and one DLI port, and the same on the other side of the PCB. At the back of the PCB, there is another M.2 M key connector for NVMe LSDs or 4G LTE module. There is also an external fan connector, real-time clock connectors, and URAT debug port. Well, I almost forget that we also have the antenna connector for the NFC readers and the audio output port. That is too technical. Now, I'm going to connect the DDI touchscreen also from UE2 and power on the device. Android will pre installed and it works flawlessly on the first boot. Booting were fast and the UI were responsive. We also have Wi-Fi connectivity since the Rautex RTL AA52BE wireless module were installed. Video playback on YouTube is good, the video at 1080p and the raw frames were very little. Before moving on, let's see how is the performance with Aquarium OpenGL test using the default browsers with 500 fishes. The frame rate is stable at 60 fps. We can see that the R1 is able to handle 5000 fishes with 40 fps. More than that, the fps is very low and playback is not good. Now, let's assemble the acrylic casing and see how it looks on the UE2 R1 SBC. Due to the video length, I will fast forward in this part. All good, we are done. We can see that the case not only protects the ball, it also gives it a slick and professional look. Plus, it has proper cutouts on all ports. It is a ray joy if you want to keep your setup organized and protected. Beside Android, the u 2 R1 can also run Ubuntu, Debian, and even Windows M. 
I have flooded Ubuntu 22s on it using the Rockshift Depth Tone and the experience were good. The DSi touchscreens were detected and no rival installation is needed. We can see that it was Ubuntu 22.04 LTS with 7.7GB of RAM and 62.5GB of storage. I also checked out the EMMC speed using the built-in disk app. The average read speed is 199MB per second, average asset time is 028 second. Alright, that will be all for this video. If you have any questions or idea what to test on the UE2 R1, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.